Hi there, I'm Ginny of the YouTube channel Finickety Reader. I have one review for you today, but I also want to talk about something quite personal at the end, just so you know. I finished reading Lucky by Alice Siebold yesterday. You may know her as the author of The Lovely Bones, which was a hardback bestseller and made into a movie in 2009. That's how I first came across her. I'd heard another booktuber recommend Lucky, but I can't for the life of me remember who and a quick search of my watch history revealed nothing. I didn't actually go out searching for this book. I was in a charity shop near my parents when I noticed it on the shelves, and remember the recommendation. Lucky is the true story of Alice Siebold's rape and her long recovery from it. It's a book that can be hard to read at times, because of the subject matter, but it says a lot of things I think most people need to hear. Alice was attacked violently by a stranger when she was walking through a park near her university. This is a defining moment of her life, and she talks about it in detail, but she also talks about how her childhood and her relationships with her family members affected and moulded her. Don't go into this thinking it'll just be a narrative of what happened. The thing that really spoke to me, the place where I could see the future writer in the young woman she was, was the way she saw the internal mental story that other people were working from, and when she needed to, using them to help get a conviction. But as a writer... She also examines her own thought processes that kept her from a full recovery for more than a decade. This is a book about rape, but it's also a book about recovery. It's also a book about PTSD and how we treat women, and the danger of turning a rage, hurt, and lack of power into violence. This is a book that says a lot of important things to women, but personally, I wish I could get more men to read it. As women, we often have a closer view of rape. It's something that we can't escape. And there's all the issues of blame and shame, but we're learning to confront it slowly as a group. Or at least I think so. We still need to work on it, but I think we're ahead. Men, on the other hand, aren't talked to as much about the issue. If it comes down to a question of men versus women, he said, she said, they can be tempted to take the side of the man, just because he's the one who's more like them, the one they understand. Add in the fact that many men, especially white, straight men, often only have a very vague idea of being at the complete mercy of someone they're afraid of, and even fewer truly grasp the problem of sexual violence. And those that learn first-hand? They have a whole load of extra crap to deal with. I did say at the beginning I wanted to talk about something more personal. You've probably guessed some of it, but not the whole story. I have been raped, and I have suffered from PTSD as well, but the two had nothing to do with each other. It happened when I was about 23. I don't remember the date. He was American and pretty. I can't close my eyes and see his face, and I wouldn't know him if I met him today. I had invited him to my house. I wasn't beaten or threatened. It wouldn't hold up in court. And it's possible you wouldn't even call it rape. That's the reason I've never told anyone before. I had consented to safe sex. It weren't mostly like you would expect. It wasn't very good sex, but I wasn't afraid. When he was close to finishing, he pulled out, removed the condom, and then carried on, and finished before I had time to protest. I'll be honest with you, I was quite sexually active, but I had never had unprotected sex, and wasn't on the pill. I just shut down didn't even talk, and eventually he left. I could only find one case like mine that ended in a conviction. A French man did it to a Swiss woman in Switzerland. The Swiss Supreme Court ruled that she did not consent to that, and he had no reason to believe that she did. As for the PTSD? Bullying. Bullying at school left me so traumatised that I couldn't go into a school without risking a panic attack, and it cost me a career in childcare. I was so bad I got set off by an air vent blowing on my neck once. I assumed it was a person messing with me. This has gotten longer than I was expecting, but oh well. I hope you found this video interesting, and life is going good for you. Talk to you later.